Welcome to Lisa's Ladle, where we're cooking big in small places. Hello, my friends, and welcome aboard Unwritten Timeline in the galley of Lisa's Ladle. This is the start of season three, and this year I have something exciting. We're gonna do gluten-free cooking, breads, cakes, cookies, and crackers. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode, and enjoy the season of gluten-free cooking. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Lisa's Ladle. If you're new to this channel, you will find out what are some of the challenges with learning to cook your favorite recipes on a boat. If you visited my galley before, welcome back. And if you are new, welcome aboard. Today's recipe is gluten-free white bread. This is the best gluten-free white bread that I have found so far, and I have tried pretty many, my friend. Let's go over the ingredients. Today's ingredients are two and a half cups gluten-free Pillsbury all-purpose flour. This flour works the best with baking. There are some other gluten-free flours out there, but it's difficult to get one that will do many different baking tricks for you. Three tablespoons of sugar, one, ta one teaspoon of salt. I'm using the Rapid Rise instant yeast, one cup of warm milk. You want your warm milk to be a temperature between 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's too hot, it will kill the yeast. If it's not warm enough, the yeast won't be activated. Two eggs and a quarter cup of but melted butter. Today I'm trying a teaspoon of vanilla because I'd like to try a little bit of flavor in my bread. Let's get our aprons on and start cooking. I don't always sift flour. This is gluten-free flour. It's the Pillsbury All-Purpose, which I was saying before. I really like it. It bakes really well. I'm going to use this. Uh, I'm sifting because I put bay leaves in my flour keep out those nasty weevils and ants and all that it dis distracts not distracts them but detach no, detacks distracts deters them it deters them a little bit of my bay leaf sugar salt Mixing all my dry ingredients to make sure they're well incorporated, well and combined together. For my microwave, it takes anywhere from one and a half to two minutes to heat the milk to the temperature that I need, the 120 degrees to the 130 degree Fahrenheit. Let's try the minute and a half first, because if it gets too hot, then we have to wait for it to cool back down. temperature I have is 124.6, so that is a good temperature, less than 130. I'm beating this with my bread beaters. They might not be called bread beaters, but I'm calling them, I call them bread beaters because that's when I use them and I'm only going to mix it until it's well combined. I have a ladle love trick for you guys. If you're doing bread, especially gluten-free bread, really sticky. Spraying uh, canola cooking spray, any kind of cooking spray. Take your, your spoon, your ladle, whatever, spatula, whatever you're using. Spray it and it helps to keep it from sticking to your Spoon, bowl, and whatnot. Set your timers for two minutes. We're going to mix this for two minutes. The time is very important on this part. It takes about two minutes to get a really good 
sticky but smooth dough. We're going to get this into a little ball in the bowl. Your clear plastic. I have a really large mixing bowl. I really doubt that my bread is, my dough is going to rise all the way to the top. But if you have a smaller mixing bowl, another, another ladle love trick is take your cooking spray that you have out, give it a little spray, turn it over. That way, when, if your bread does rise to the top, you're able to release it pretty easy. So you're going to want to wrap this and keep it in a warm spot for 10 minutes. We're going to set this aside, let that proof for 10 minutes, and while that's proofing, I'm going to grease the baking pan. If you know anything about me, you know I love me some Crisco. I like my Crisco. When you're baking bread, you want to, I have read recipes where it says go ahead and use the cooking spray. This is where I would advise you against that. Either Crisco or some type of shortening or butter with, with uh, baking bread. Works a lot better. Every time I've used the cooking spray, it sticks on me. This is cornmeal. I haven't tried this yet other than with pizza dough. I'm gonna put a little dusting of cornmeal on my pan, my greased pan. See if that gives a little extra kick to the bread. gluten-free bread before, you know, any little trick, any little help the bread can get is a bit, can make a big difference. Okay guys, proof number one is complete. 10 minute proof is done. What we're going to do is now you're going to take your dough and put it into your 9 by 9 greased. You can add your cornmeal or not. Either way, I'm sure it's going to be good either way to the baking dish and get it ready for proof number two. We're armed with our cooking spray spatula so this is going to help us get our sticky 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 dough into our baking pan. It also helps you get it smooth into the pan too. If you've never baked gluten-free bread before, you're going to be amazed how sticky this stuff is. Cover. Again, you can use your cooking spray clear plastic if you need to. I know mine's not going to rise this high because I've used this pan before and this recipe before, so I'm going to just use my cooking towel. Set your timers for 30 minutes. I'll see you back here in 30 minutes. With the magic of TV, it's been 30 minutes. So it's time to get our, uh, our bread into the oven. Turn off your timer. You want to preheat your oven 350 degrees Fahrenheit. About 20 minutes into the proof, I started heating up my oven. On the boat, it takes about 10 minutes for it to get 350 degrees. Now my bread's ready to stick in the oven. We're gonna bake this for 40 minutes. Check to see if it's golden brown, done in the center, and then take it out and slice it up. 40 minutes is up, let's take a look at our bread. That is some mighty fine looking bread there, my friends. Let me tell you the skinny. The scoop, the 411, the dish, if you will. Gluten free white bread doesn't taste as good, soft, 
yummy, delicious, like your butternut bread. But as far as gluten-free breads go, this bread is pretty gosh darn good. And it doesn't taste like cardboard. That's kind of my scale. Does it taste like cardboard? No, it's pretty good guys. I hope you try this recipe, especially if you have a sensitivity to gluten. Let's slice it up and see what it looks like. What I tell you guys, Crisco. That's what you get when you cook with Crisco. If your better half is anything like my better half, they like warm, melted butter bread. The rest of the bread I'm going to let cool before I slice it up. Completely cool before I slice it up. Two thumbs up. As always, my friends, remember to live, love, laugh, lick that ladle. And I'll keep cooking until I see you next time. Now I'm ready to see, I'm ready to